I will always be fat. Fat does not mean lazy, selfish person. So rather than judge all fat people, take a minute to think. If you were to look at me, you'd probably make some snide remark about how the only exercise I get is lifting potato chips. Enough with the misconceptions. I'm physically active and I work out more than a lot of my skinny friends. Not all fat people are lazy. So before you judge, think. Now, I appreciate this email very much from our friend, mm-hmm. a Moorier. Mm-hmm. This is a Moorier. He's is, out there. Yeah. Fat guy hiking is pretty tight. It is. You're up on top of a mountain. It's just a fat guy jiggles past you with a backpack on. <laughs> Who's doing better than you? But let me tell you something. I don't think fat equals uh, lazy and selfish. There are people who are genetically predisposed to just simply be overweight. But I guarantee you the guy that wrote this email does not eat like a thin person. No, of course he doesn't. And he probably doesn't drink like a thin person. And he probably eats the crappy... I put it this way. I grew up with my best friend growing up, Dave DeGeorge. And he was a fat dump growing up. And you know what he said? He said, fuck that. And now he's diesel, like ripped, shredded. And his, he was fat. You know what he did? He changed his life. So, dude, you know, you can work out all you want. I know I have those friends, too. We call them skinny fat people. <laughs> You know, a skinny fat person, no. they just, they're fat, but they don't, you don't know how they're fat because they, they work out and stuff and they're supposed to be skinny and they're like. there's a pizza under their desk at all times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. This guy's full of shit. He's lying to himself. Well, hold on. This is a fan of the podcast. Sorry. Now. Sorry. You want him to subscribe to the Crab Feast, yeah, don't of you? Of course. Yeah. And now I want to cra- help him too. The Crab Feast is the number one podcast for fat people nationwide. <laughs> so if you're overweight listening to this, you really want to subscribe to the Crab Feast. I lift weights three days a week. I run three to five miles Three now that's a that two mile margin of error is where three to five. Wait a minute, because I I'll tell you something. When I run, Mm -hmm. it's two point two mile run. I do it on the sand, Mm -hmm. lifeguard stand eight. I loop around lifeguard stand eighteen, and I come back. So from to mescal, and how often are you doing it? uh, Now I don't do it at all because I've just been eating better. Yeah. Uh, but I really like it. I want to get back because I like seeing the dolphins every morning too. It fires me up for my whole day. I think it'd be pretty hilarious if some ultimate warriors went out to eight and eighteen, and every time like you come around, they just heckled you. Like, keep it up, JJ. That's why I keep saying it. <laughs> hoping, I keep, hoping. I keep waiting for paparazzi to get out there. <laughs> yeah. Because like, what's more inspiring than having your picture taken while you run? You'll never make an ugly cum face again no as you're hustling. Way. You'll just be like rising up <laughs> straight to the jeans. You won't have any problems. No. So, you know what? Next time I'm out working out, I'm just going to send out a tweet like, all right, I guess it's time for my jog. Hope no paparazzi see me. <laughs> LO. But then you got to get in shape before you send out that oh, tweet. Oh, hell yeah. Well, first, listen to this guy. I appreciate that he's working out and he's running. Because trust me, I have a really tough time. And you know what usually happens to me? I start eating right and I'm working out. And then I, I expect to see the results. And I'll be three, four weeks in and I haven't seen the results. And then I just fucking relapse and I start eating food again. Beer. Yeah, beer is not good, bro. Lay off beer. Lay off fat food. So this guy, you know who you are because you sent this. I want you to send us what you eat, and we'll read it again. I I think it's interesting because I and Jay Larson both think you can't possibly do what you're doing and be heavy unless you're eating like a goddamn – like the trash heap in Fraggle Rock. Yeah. (laughs) You have to. I mean, diet, as they say, is 90% of everything, and it it is. You're 90% of water, man. I am? Well, aren't we? What is it? Ninety-eight percent. What? 98%? You're made up. Look at. I guarantee it's over 90, seventy. I, my body, my bones, my skin, my percent eyes, is water. My hair. Ninety-eight percent. Everything is ninety-eight percent water. Not, maybe I'm ninety-eight. Just a water balloon with eyes. <laughs> you are, man. You're out of your Be mind. Be careful. Let's, no get, let's get our stats. No What's our stat? Hey, how was Rooster Tea Feathers? You were just up in Sunnyvale. Yeah, yeah, it was How'd good. It, go? it was good. You been? I mean, yes, that I club's have not too small there, for you. But I heard there tiny. was crab feast fans there. There were some crab feast fans there, man. And one guy, I said this on the pot. We did the podcast last night, me and Rye, and uh, the host was like, "You've seen this guy on Conan Half Hour Special, and he's got a podcast called The Crab Feast." And a couple of fans were like, "Fuck the crab feast!" And the host was like, "Oh my god!" Like he was scared, nervous like, local guy. Yeah, he didn't know what to do. He's like, "Oh, okay." And then I got up on stage and I'm like, "Guys, don't be nervous," you know. And then Sickle and I were getting around like there's like some couple out like I'm thinking about getting a mai tai, and all of a sudden, "Fuck the crab feast!" <laughs> it, it freaks people out if because obviously they don't know. What I noticed the crab it too feast is. in my live shows. There's. Put your name on it. Like people start, they'll just, it's, it's really like letting a dog loose. Yeah. Like once one puppy gets out of the pen. Yeah. Yeah. They follow, they follow them out. (laughs) So you get one puppy going like, be a man. Oh, well put your name on it. Unchained. Like they just start yelling stuff. 
Uh, human beings, ni- wait, you have two separate numbers. 83 to 90% water is the human being. See? So what are all our bones and blood? There's, and- there's water. De- that's why they say drink water all the time. You know, It's just like looking at the earth. You forget how much water consumes the earth. Let me tell you something. Tell me. I never forget how much water consumes the earth. So don't fucking come <laughs> in here with your bullshit scientist <laughs> attitude. I got 83 to 90. We- yes, you did. But don't ever question how much I know the earth is made of water. Ever, Larson. You don't even you can know. Take it right you don't know. You think it's all sand. <laughs> no, bro. 70% of the earth is covered by water. The other 30% is covered by Darrell Revis. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Boom. Please. Boom. Boom. Please. Where's Darrell Revis this year? He's nursing his hamstring. And you know what? God bless him because who the hell would want to be out with that fucking field of assholes oh, known as the God. New York Jets? Sorry about it, man. They suck. Fuck them. They em. suck. The whole team. You see that dude? Who was that receiver shredding on their fans? Talking about their fans shouldn't be chanting Tebow. I heard Tebow start next week. Is that true? I haven't heard anything about it. But well, let me tell you something. Yeah. And I've said this uh, to friends. I said it when I guest hosted Jim Rome. I said it when I was guest hosting AM 570 at night. If you have a discussion for four years about whether or not your quarterback's the guy, he's not the guy. He's not the guy. Listen, Dallas Cowboys, Tony Romo, and I don't really give a shit about the Cowboys yeah. or Tony Romo, but the fact that he's still in the discussion, yeah, he's not the guy. Philip Rivers, perfect example, having an abomination of a year, yeah, but there's no discussion. Yeah. He's the guy. Yeah. He's a very good – but like Tony Romo, no. He's obviously not the guy. Because when you're the guy – Eli Manning, the conversation was about one year. And yeah. then he wins the fucking Super Bowl. That's and you it. go, oh, sorry, Eli. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Romo hasn't done anything. He won one playoff game, right? <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to know why he's fucking holding as a place kicker's holder anyway. Let's not talk about football because yeah. we'll lose the chicks. Son. Let's talk more about how great the ladies look today. Listening. In, in right life? now, listening. Well, you know, every woman listening to this podcast, you just look good. You look yeah, terrific. Ladies. Look at yourselves right now. Feel you good look about good. it. You got that Mally makeup. You're watching Real Housewives of uh, mm-hmm. Miami right now. You got your act together. You know, you're not getting your, your old man an ear beaten. You're just taking care of your ear business. Beating. I dig it. My favorite thing about women, looks wise, one thing, bro, confidence. And that's really? maybe what this fat guy needs to t- learn about. Is yeah, even a heavy. The chick- fat guy's got plenty of confidence. He just emailed me and said, "Hey, fuck you! I'm running three to five miles, working out, lifting weights, and I backpack, and I'm hiking all over what goddamn Tibet. And I just happen to be fat as a result of all of my exercise. Yeah, it has redistributed my lean muscle mass has redistributed he did not itself get as that fat. In depth. No, I'm. I'm. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving him more credit than he deserves. But you know I, what the guy? You know what I love that he spoke up, and this is interactive. Go to crabfeast.com for Jay Larson and Ryan Sickler's podcast. I'm at jaymore.com. Hit me up. I'll I answer you guys. Yeah, we'll always answer questions, <clears throat> usually via Twitter. But Twitter's if you good, can but also you gotta email. you don't want to crush your timeline. That's the whole. That's the hard thing about when you start answering on Twitter. Oh yeah. Here's the one thing about Twitter too. You go, hey, I'm gonna be in um. I'm going to be in Baltimore at Magoobies. And then no matter what town you say, you've just opened the floodgates. Come to... uh, When are you coming to Chicago, bro? When are you coming to Toronto? Like, well, I'm not. That's (laughs) the point of this tweet, to tell you where I am going. Yeah, I know. That's why your town name was omitted. They just want... they just showing that... You're like, I'm going to get a layover. I'll get a layover. I'm going to do a 10-minute set. The Jay Moore fucking boat with no outboard set in, in the lobby <laughs> or is only <laughs> yeah or is only. my new tour you have a bumper sticker on your boat or is only <laughs> i always wanted a goddamn boat man my grand my you know my grandfather had a house on the water and then my parents divorced so we never even like we go up there once in a while but if my parents had stayed together dude i would have had a moped i would have my own boat so you think your parents' divorce really yep. cost you a childhood? You yeah. would have been like fucking Ricky Schroeder and Silver Spoons, oh, dude. train set running through the house. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's really your that parents. Was, I still divorce. want one in my backyard. I'm like, like I'm gonna get that train set. But you are like, you are sort of a couple times in this conversation. Your parents' divorce is what kept you from having things that other kids had. No, it just kept me us from being who we were supposed to be. We had to redefine ourselves. What? But that's who you were. I know. You were a child of divorce that made you like every other kid in this country. Yeah, I know. Made you common. <laughs> yeah. And, we and could, you're like, that's why I didn't we have a moped. Our... My parent, well, how old were you when your parents got divorced? Two. I was two years old. My parents got divorced. Fast forward, 16 years old. No moped. God damn it. Thanks I was holding on to it then. Yeah. Thanks for not working it out, folks. I would have loved to have been blasted through town on my general. The kind that you had to <laughs> pedal to start. Yeah. Oh, my God. Those are the only ones. 
Yeah, I had to pedal pretty hard. And Good. that's even when the engine would go out, you could pedal it all. That's the thing. <laughs> you always saw those guys on the side of the road at least once every two weeks where I'm like, there's some dude pedaling his moped because it didn't work. Let me tell you something. You are never more boss as a kid than when you ride your moped to baseball practice. Ugh. For everyone listening out there, women and nerds. Nerds! <laughs> When you pull up on a general moped with your mitt and you're like, all right, let's 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 go. Let's, let's do go. it. Oh, what is your mom dropping you off? Yeah, I got my moped. Yeah, I Thanks. got my moped. I got my moped mm. license. Let me just put my helmet down right here next to the backstop. My turn to hit. You could go 0 for 15. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, you, everyone's waiting for their fuck. mom to roll up in the stick shift station wagon. Yeah. And you get on that general. <laughs> Later, dudes. Later. Even if it doesn't start and you're pedaling home, it's, <laughs> you still have the potential of that thing working. Yeah, there's all there's that is hysterical, Jay Larson. You, that is amazing. When it doesn't work and you're pedaling at home, every once in a while it just goes, fuck it. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about That's that. That's the genius of those things, man. Man, they really, you don't see them that much. Any, well, I guess because we're on the West Coast, you, you'd kill yourself. You realize like that's kind of like the American dream is what you said, riding your moped to baseball practice? I mean, that's just sick. Yeah. Picking up a girl. Imagine just being able to pick up, being done with baseball practice, and then being like, you know what? I'm gonna swing by freaking uh, Melissa Capitanios' house <laughs> and see if she's around and take her out for an ice cream because you can. Why don't Italian you hop girl? on the back? <laughs> yeah, Italian, big, big, bu- big bush, <laughs> huge B. No, I don't even know. I just. Uh, but here's the other thing with the American dream is what we're really getting way off the, our base here. What was it? The base is if you're 16, the American dream is simply to have a girl. Oh, yeah. All course. baseball practice, mopeds. Like, we're really expanding the base to keep it in pollet talk. Just having. But really, the base, the base dream at 16 is if I could find a dead woman on the way to school, <laughs> like just newly dead. Yeah. I think I could get. Still warm. Yeah. Or maybe, or she's, that's morbid. But I did used to actually go, because I used to take the railroad tracks to school. Uh huh. And I'd be like, maybe there's a girl that's like unconscious. I mean, like fifth grade. This was something I was very aware of, like penis goes in the vagina. And you were thinking... If she's unconscious and I'll help her, I'll revive her and then she'll have sex with me to thank me. (laughs) Yeah. Reviving her body next to the railroad. See, okay, see, I thought you were going somewhere completely different with it. I thought you were just going to take her when she was unconscious. But you were like, oh, I can revive her back. Yeah, I know. But I like that you're like reviving her back to health. And she's, oh, my hero. It's like that dream you have as a child all the time is mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. Mm-hmm. And right in the middle of it, she's so grateful. She starts making out with you. Yeah. And they do it sometimes like on like Nickelodeon shows, you see it. <laughs> yeah. But what they always leave out in any mouth-to-mouth resuscitation scenario is the person vomits in your mouth. That happens? You don't, come on, bro. What do you think? I've never given mouth-to-mouth. The, you're you're giving mouth to mouth because the person a, a drowning a drowning specific mouth to mouth yeah they're gonna because there's it water out. in their lungs yeah. so when you get everything working again it's like a bilge pump yeah it just goes <laughs> Bleh! and then what the good news is your grandfather mm-hmm. made a blue light that goes on right next to the person's cheek to let you know they're about to vomit in your mouth you ready for this mm-hmm. my other grandfather was asked one time to put in on you know those pumps that you have in like your boat where you pull up like this and it would mm-hmm. suck the water up and then you push yeah. it out the guy who the created the manual that, get the water out of the boat pump yeah guy went to my grandfather I was like hey can you give some money for this he's like ah, i really don't have the money right now boom every boat in, in america so you're so what i'm getting from the larson family tree <laughs> is old women that own the block like the mob Mm-hmm. Like it was the wire. No. <laughs> yeah. And then men that just let life go right past them. No, he crushed like, it. Like, hey, this is Coca-Cola stock. It's 19 fit. Like, what do I know from Coca-Cola? One ta- I'm going to hang yeah. out for something better. Yeah, no. So, because one grandfather was an inventor and missed out. What was the, the other grandfather? No, he was a out? baker. He was a baker. But he missed out on the other great invention. Yeah, but he, he, he crushed other places. Like you remember when the gas, remember, you remember when the gas crunch hit? Yeah. You know, like you'd get your gas according to like your license plate number. Well, yeah. there was like a sugar crunch too. Seventy six, seventy seven. Yeah, there's like sugar went down and like no one could get sugar. My grandfather saw it coming. He dropped like twenty G's on sugar and just kept it up in his house. Really? Yeah. So like when this what drought year was hit, this? I don't know. It was kind of in the same zone, like late seventies, early eighties. People was would no just sugar. Shortage. Yeah, there was. You're out of your sugar mind. Sugar shortage. Look it up. Sugar shack. And, <laughs> what was your Where's grandfather's name? Shack? Loring. Loring Lawson. Loring? Family name? L-O-R-I-N-G. Swedish. So you're telling me that Loring Larson, 
Yeah. Foresaw a sugar crisis. He saw it coming, man. And bought twenty thousand dollars of sugar Something and turned like his that. house into a de facto sugar shack. <laughs> as people were lined up for gas during the Carter administration, and they're like, "Let's go up to Lars and Sal's and get some sugar." No, and they were tonight. They were going, yeah, they were going and just getting bread from other places. And my grandfather's turning out cookies no, and cakes. No, I think you're off by a few decades, bro. Well, maybe it was. I a think when time. I said he went to Iraq, that put your head in a tailspin. That's a different. Uh, that's the other one, man. Sugar shortage, 1970s. What do you got, Angie? Anything? It's loading. It's loading. Crack producing staff. That's Andrew Furtado, ladies it's and gentlemen. I know the Wi-Fi in this house is balls across the nose, bro. Fake mustache studios needs to work on their Wi-Fi. Apparently, and I'll tell you, I, I can only make phone calls from right there. 1974, July. Oh! Boom! Up top. Thank you, Jay Larson. Rockets a double off the wall. Loring Lawson. Sugar shortage. Sugar shortage. Thank 1974. you. I'm, I'm curious Huge. to how that happened. One article. I wrote it. That's what came up. <laughs> I knew this was going to come up. You're like, shit, I better get this up on the line from my Prius. <laughs>